Hello everybody and welcome back to the Oklahoma City Sports Network. I'm the Cowboy Pirate uh, and I am as always joined by Brian. How's it going, Brian? Uh, it's going good. It's going good. Good to be back. Good to be back. back but we got some a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. We got our recap from last week's game against the Sentinels. We got the final few trades that were made before the trade deadline. Uh, a update on the Bailey situation. The preview for tonight's matchup against the Bruisers and playoff scenarios to talk about. So, oh, I think we should stop wasting time. Let's get straight into uh, the week three recap. We'll start with the Sentinel statistics. Then over to the yep. So, starting with the Sentinels, rally twenty-two for thirty-seven, four hundred forty-three passing yards, a fifty-nine point five completion percentage, five touchdowns, an interception, and a rushing touchdown from Rally. So. Really having a solid. He had a, I'd say, a decent game against the Twisters. Yeah. And uh, moving on to the receiving core, he had ruins me five, five receptions, 110 receiving yards, two touchdowns. Manny with six receptions, 129 receiving yards, and a touchdown. Kodak five receptions, 139 receiving yards, two touchdowns. Big shot with a reception for 17 yards. High high with uh, three receptions for 39 receiving yards and trippy two receptions for nine yards. So. That had like three main guys for the for the Sentinels getting the getting the ball at the receiving floor, and then you had the other two kind of just making some small plays. Yeah. So uh, moving on to center, or Orch out of his two drives, he let up out of his ten drives, he let up two sacks. On mm-hmm. the defensive side of things, uh, a trippy he got two safeties, and trick shot got an interception. Uh so, no. Sentinel said not a not a bad day whatsoever for them as they got the win last week over the Twisters, but but uh, I'll say looking at the final score is a very close game. 47-41 and going up against a team that faced a lot of turmoil heading into that matchup. I think Twisters did a good job. Uh, best yeah, I, I would definitely agree. Uh, moving on though, we gotta talk about the statistics for the Twisters outside of the game. So Parker, 17 for 34, 410 passing yards, a 15% completion percentage, six touchdowns and interceptions. And uh, receiving wise, he got it's it's kind of interesting. Samuel, 10 receptions, 317 receiving yards for four touchdowns. Parker was feeding Samuel the ball. That's all yeah, I can, that's all you can say. He was yeah, feeding that, that was crazy game. Crazy game by Samuel and Parker there. And some other guys too. Who uh, got honor with two receptions for 34 yards. BTD, three receptions, 32 receiving yards, two touchdowns. So BTD, not getting as many yards as he had been getting, but he still got still got two touchdowns out of that. So oh, I'd say he still had a decent game. Not, uh, But he had, the, he, had the, he had the touchdowns, at least. So that's all you can really ask for. Uh, uh, Rain status with the reception for 11 yards and mix with a reception for 16 yards. So really the receiving force for this game was Samuel and he kind of had a little bit of some other people. But mostly it was Samuel. Yeah. At center, BBLA out of his 10 drives, he let up two sacks. And on the defensive side of things, he had... Mission accomplished. Uh, we got an interception. BBLA got a sack, and and Donner got a sack. Oh yeah, big day. So it was a very competitive game, and I think um, based off of I think a uh, double check up here. Back. Uh, yeah, so based off the scores, this was, this game was actually considered the game of the week, and based off last week, it was it was it not, it wasn't the closest game because that goes to Philly and Newark, but this was probably the most entertaining to watch when you look at the rest yeah. of these. Yeah, and I and I definitely feel like everyone kind of felt the sense of urgency that of how bad the Twisters really needed this game, and I think it just really showed and. I mean, it was a great game by Parker, I definitely think, and you know, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll save that for later. I'll save that thought for later. But but go ahead, grab with what you were saying. Just wanted to add that in there. Yeah. So, oh, a six point loss for a team that faced a lot of turmoil. I think that game just proved that Twisters—they're not 
until they're not going to give up until they say we give up. And I don't think we're giving up this week, especially yeah, since uh, we did have two trades left for the trade deadline. Let's talk about those real quick. So your first trade made was with the Freedom. The Freedom got uh, it's, uh, Vert and Riscio, and the Twisters got Hideo out of that trade. And then your last trade was the big tra- was the big closing trade for the Twisters with the Florida Firecats. They received Mix, and the Twisters received Cursa. Yeah, that that that's a that's a big trade right there. That's QB one. So teams, we're going back onto the QB carousel one more time. Week four, we bring out one. Last- we bring out another quarterback. Hopefully, this one stays for the rest yeah. for the rest of the rest of the season. We got three yeah. games to go, and I we mean, got a, got a small update on the Bailey situation. Not a not a huge one, but a small one. So, but we got to talk about it anyways. So, so based off uh, the suspension channel, we got he admitted to alt knowledge and exploit knowledge. So, but uh, his suspension will stay the same. Way. Yeah, that that that's definitely that's definitely a killer. It's definitely a killer. I uh, you know, I was hoping I was hoping he was innocent, but you know, as I, as I said last week, uh, I wasn't gonna put any any more thoughts to it until it officially came out. And you know, there it was. I know Bailey's doing all he can for less time, but you, know, you almost gotta assume that like that this is pretty much. <sighs> This is uh it for now. Yeah. So that being said though, we also I did the mid season power ranking season and twisters uh they finished just short of the top twenty, they got twenty second. And when you have a lot of one and when you had a lot of one and two teams kind of the only thing really separating them was point differentials and strength of schedules. But uh, definitely. But with the Twisters, I think the situation is. I think the power ranking thing for them doesn't show what this team truly holds because week one was by far the worst game. And there's no doubt in my mind. The shutout from the Raiders, get blown out by the Raiders, I think really hurt them. Week two was the bounce back game they needed. Yeah. But then the suspension didn't help. The suspension for Bailey didn't really. Made it worse, but a close loss definitely helps him out with some statistical, especially as we got some playoff scenarios to talk about. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think last week against the Sentinels, I mean, that was really the best, the best losing um, uh, situation. And I would definitely, I mean, you know, hopefully, hopefully, uh, Cursa can can stay and and lead lead us to a win out because i think that's definitely what needs to happen um you know it's rough it's rough now having more quarterbacks play or yeah more qb ones than games they've actually played so that's that's rough but you know we're going through it we're we're getting through it i I definitely think this will be our last one this season i feel like it has to be i don't know who else would step in but that's what i gotta say on that Oh, let's uh start with let's look at some of this playoff scenario. So after right now the current standings, Twisters hold the second seed in the Plains division. With the only team currently uh tied with them record wise is the Cruisers who play tonight at nine. The winner of that game really does get the number two seed in the division. And they hold the win over the leading the team leading the division, the Mexico City Aztecs. So here is your first playoff scenario. You know, the Twisters win out, making them four and two. The Aztecs lose at least one game. The Twisters jump the Aztecs because of the tiebreaker. They got the win over them, and the Twisters take the Plains Division title once again. Yeah, yeah. That is, I, I, that's the scenario we want. I mean, I yeah, know, so that's what we want. Right. Um. Also, Crab, I, I don't know if you can confirm this. I know that <laughs> you're an expert, but I it was brought to me earlier that the Twisters have a streak of not losing divisional games. Is is that? Let's uh, I, check that real quick here. 
I, it was actually Parker who told me. Um, just uh, check in that room. Trying to see if I can try it. So, so here, so I'm just going to give us the record against every divisional opponent. We are one and zero against the Toros. We are three and zero against the Vikings. Four and zero against the Aztecs and 1-0 against the Bruisers, so that is correct. As of now, the Swissers are undefeated against everybody in their division. And their last three games, they're all divisional games. So, that streak could potentially end. we still got uh, two other playoff scenarios to talk about. The two more... Well, you got probably the most... So, you got, like, most the two most likely and a one possible, but, but hopefully not. So, your second scenario is... Even if the Twisters, the Twisters could win out, but the Aztecs, they don't lose. They go five and one. Twisters go four and two. Twisters get a at least a play-in game, and uh, maybe like uh, realistically going going four and two. I think that gets them somewhere between maybe the five and eight seed, somewhere around there. And that's what a four and two could get you heading into the Western Conference playoffs. But that is. Your second scenario, so Aztecs can t- just win out and they go five and one. Twisters go four and two. Twisters don't win the division, but they do go into the playoffs. But they do not win the division. Your third and final scenario is the one I don't want to. T- it's the one that I hope doesn't happen, but you got to mention anyways. Twisters miss the playoffs after losing one or two games. Yeah, or somehow, that... or losing out. I, yeah, you, realistically, yeah. I don't see us losing out. I see us at least. I, I think it's very likely we could win out. We could potentially drop one. We could go three and three. That's another scenario. Three and three, get us and sneak into the plans. Your, yeah. your most like, I think your most likely scenario is scenario B, where Twisters win out, but Aztecs, they don't drop a game five and one. The Twisters sneak in with play it. With a wild card at hard spots or playing game, your second most likely is Aztecs drop at least one, and Twisters win out, and yeah. take the division. Your third most likely is potentially a three and three play and sneak in, and I mean there's obviously a bunch of more like small changes you could make to some of these scenarios, but these are like the more common ones. And the fourth most unlikely, I believe, is Twisters out in this playoffs yeah um i mean i don't i definitely i don't see that happening but i i definitely feel like i mean it's it's i mean as as everyone knows like i'll i'll call a game like when i see it being dropped i just don't really see a game that we would um drop drop here really but um you know I mean, it could very well happen. I'm. I mean, we still have team chemistry to build, so that that that's definitely you know something that's still in the air there. But um, I I definitely I, the only place I see where we could struggle, really. I mean, I mean I, I see I, I see that the Toros have been putting up some fights. I mean, you know they're. I mean they haven't. I, I know. They haven't won, but they're competitive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know you. I know you'd feel some way about that one, Crab. I so, oh. I'll, yeah. Um, the Vikings. I mean, they are gonna want our heads. Yeah, they but have, I'll, they currently have not beaten the Twisters and have not won the Red River rivalry game since it was established. They want our heads on a plot. Well, you know, uh, you know, especially I'll, if I'll, you look in franchise announcements and you see you have the. How they've uh, been posting stuff. They want our heads. Yeah, I think I think they posted a picture of putting me through a table or something like that, or RKOing me or something like that. I'm not really. Yeah, they want our heads. They want they want our heads. That is that's the only way you can really say it. They want to us. But but I'll say it this way. I'll say it this way. Uh, everyone knows who the real franchise is between us, and we're the younger franchise. So I'll say it this way: uh, Vikings ain't got nothing on us this year. I definitely think we'll, we'll. I think we'll be in by a couple of possessions. I mean, obviously we'll save it for that week, but you know, it, it, that that's that's a war zone around here. So. I
Honestly, I'm surprised they didn't try and put meat, try and do uh, anything to me. Cause I'm, I'm a big wrestling fan. I'm surprised they didn't try and like make a graphic of like I don't know, oh, put me through a glass pane or something. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely. Yeah, it's it's a heated robbery right now, to say the least. Especially since we, it's always your week six closer. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it's, a, it's something. It's. It's always gonna be a, it's always gonna be a you know big game. No matter if, no matter what 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 teams what record, I mean I definitely think it's a tad bit of an off season. Or, uh, Both teams, yeah. I'd say, both losing records, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so uh, we still got tonight's game to talk about. So let's go ahead and give our preview on that. We got the Barton Bruisers tonight at nine. I hate the Cowboy Crab, so it's kind of taking a look at how the Bruisers have done so far this season. They started out out with a win over the Vikings, uh, then heading into number two. Uh, find them. Uh, they dropped their game to the Sacks and Sunburst in a close game, though, a three point game. Game summer week three, they lose to the Rexshire Rattlers, so they're on a two game losing streak right now. Heading into tonight's matchup. Yeah, yeah, no, it's. I I definitely think we got this one in the. Yeah. In, in, uh, one thing uh, though uh, is we gotta go play them, so we have to go on the road to Barton. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely it's, it's not fun not playing at home, but uh, <clears throat> you know, it's. It, I I think it, it's not gonna be like, you know, playing. Uh, that uh, like this, or yeah, I right. think yeah, I definitely think our first three matches were the toughest for us, and I think from here on out, I think we've got a good chance of winning out, and making playoffs. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree on that. Why? I, I think the odds are in our favor, and it's really gonna come down to the Aztecs. But I mean, we we really only. Can, we, can someone, can someone pull up the Aztecs? Who do they have? Shit. Oh, well, actually, I just pulled up. They have the Sunbirds, and the Sunbirds have been... Oh, okay. That's... Yeah, Aztecs, Sunbirds, I think that's definitely the game that they could drop. Yeah, I mean, or Warriors. I mean, that that's not even at home. That could be a trap game, so... Uh, maybe. Warriors are two and two. So, uh, yeah, they're about in the middle. Yeah, so they got the win. They got a pretty dominant win over over Atlanta. Uh, but uh, yeah. now they're gonna they're gonna have to face the Warriors, which is a potential game where they could lose. But then you got the Sunbirds, and the Sunbirds is looking like one of the best teams in OFL right now. I mean, they are I, no doubt in my mind they are playing in the toughest division in the Western Conference, and maybe all of the OFL. Yeah. They got yeah, the Raiders I... and the Rams in their division. All three of them are undefeated. Yeah, no, that, that's... I, I it's, definitely scary, like it's, the... it's scary in the Pacific Division, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but uh, tonight's prediction, I think Twisters... I think I think we're probably going to agree on this. I think Twisters, we're getting the win tonight. We're getting back to 500... We're getting ourselves out of the tank bowl because based off my rules tonight is a tank bowl match. So we get out of we get we dig ourselves out of the tank bowl hole. Oh, we get back to five hundred. We go two and two, and we look forward to to our last home game of the season against the Houston Toros next week. Yep. Uh, I mean, you know, I guess just to drop the specifics, to drop. Uh, I'm sorry to ease everyone's mind here uh, tonight. I'm going to take the Twisters with a little bit more of a comfortable win here. Uh, Crab, why don't you give me 56-35 Twisters? Pretty close to what I was finally thinking. I was, I was thinking at least two possessions. So I think my final score prediction will probably be yeah, 40, 48 to uh, 32. Your final for my, uh, think for my prediction for your final tonight. So, I think that about covers everything for today. Brian, you got any closing thoughts here for us? 
Uh, no, no, I, I think I'm about to say, I think everything uh, that needs to be said was said. All right, well, we'll wrap it up here for you today, folks. Representing the Oklahoma City Sports Network, I am the Cowboy Crab. It's your boy, Justin Fields Goat. The analyst for the Oklahoma City Sports Network saying so long, everybody.